In your games as Castile, when you conquer Central America, do you only create one massive colony here? If so, you've been doing it wrong all this time. But don't worry, in today's episode, you will learn why the more colonies, the better. Greetings, imperialists. It's Lucas here. Yes, this is the second episode of the Castilian miniseries on colonization. But in the meantime, there are also many other wars going on. You can see that with England and France. Speaking of wars, we have a very good opportunity to attack Morocco. That's why I declare war on them without hesitation, including Sous. Remember, I have a really overpowered general. Really, right now, right now. Well, for now, the Moroccan troops are completely avoiding me. And have you noticed? that it's a problem with this game version the enemy always flees i know that morocco is one technology behind but come on while exploring the new world i focus on the americas mainly i want central america of course to conquer it first but the coasts of america and the caribbean are definitely valuable to us finally the first colonist well unfortunately the colonies are still too far away for us nevertheless we are very close because at this stage of idea development we will be able to comfortably establish colonies in the new world Choosing the right colonial policy is a crucial step. The first option is for the lazy one. Simply, no rebellions will occur in the newly established colonies, whether in the New World or Africa. So in short, you won't have to send armies here. The second policy is more suitable for colonizing Africa, because you receive a bonus called native assimilation. For every thousand inhabitants assimilated after the province is fully established, you receive a small bonus to goods production. Okay then, in the Americas there are around a thousand, maybe one and a half thousand, sometimes two and a half thousand here and there, but no more, so it turns out to be weak. On the other hand, in Africa, provinces have around six or 7,000 inhabitants, and then it's worth choosing that policy. The third policy is the best for fast colonization and establishing colonies mainly in America. And, since I want to focus initially on America, I choose this policy. Of course, we can change it as we wish, but it costs us one stability point, which is not too good, to be honest. We're destroying the Moroccan army, I think. No, for sure. And we begin the process of devouring these Moroccan leftovers, as well as Morocco itself. Of course, I will take these provinces from him to separate him from the sea as soon as possible, so it stops pirating me. I'm also separating Morocco from Tunis, so they won't conquer it. And I'm creating a pathway to the gold mine in Tefila. That doesn't matter. I'm not really concerned about aggressive expansion. Oh, how nice. I would advise you to check for the appearance of a new pope. Whether he is old or young, this one is quite young, actually. But if he were old and above 65 years old, then I would recommend investing papal influence in becoming the next pope. That way, we will have the greatest chances of seizing power on the papal throne. In the meantime, I'm starting to develop develop our country by focusing on developing marketplaces. This is super important because it will increase our share in the civilian trade, which is the most important center for us for a very long time. It's actually strange that I'm only getting to it now. I'm also establishing law and order in Spain. Finally, I'm considering developing ports in Seville as well, but maybe I'll wait until administrative technology reaches level 7 first, because then I'll trigger the Golden Age, so I can develop it even cheaper. For now, I'll add all the provinces here after Morocco to the trade company, although I'll detach them later on, but I'll mention why I'm doing it later. A tournament. I received the third merchant. For now, I'm placing him in Seville. However, when I will reach to the Ivory Coast, I will move him there. I just love how Portugal complicates my plans. But there's nothing wrong with that, actually. I'll just attack them a few times. Second development. Well, since I already have the colonial development, I'll choose the reduced aggressive expansion. And actually, the comment got my attention. That I should choose the maritime doctrine anyway. Because the further we go, the more expensive it will be for us. Currently, I don't really benefit much from the merchant fleet. It only becomes useful after 1600, or right from the start for Portugal. That's why I'll invest in a great navy anyway. We're smashing the Portuguese. They don't stand a chance, really. Which is strange, because they have a better army at the start. The Burgundians attacked England. Actually, that's very good. And I hope I'm defeating the Portuguese army right now. Yes! And as a result of the war, I'm taking a colony from Portugal. And they themselves sent a colonist here. I have faster access to Brazil. And we're finishing off these smaller countries here. Although I have one province left, but I'll deal with that later. And we have have acquired our first gold mine outside of Europe, and we're getting a pretty good bonus from it. And for 100 years, now I'm immediately starting the regular colonization of the New World. And remember, first we send a regular colonist, so that as soon as they arrive in the New World, we recall them, and we immediately send the expel minorities action. So you know, we relocate the minority population.
population, just remember to relocate from the appropriate provinces, especially where you can develop provinces at a low cost, because such relocation takes away development from the provinces. Fortunately, the lioness culture has a few good provinces like that, with a low cost of development. I think Galician culture has them too. And here in the region, I'll develop level 2 trade centers. And of course, we activate the trade edict in each of these regions. In the meantime, I move my army to England, which I'm now attacking and I want to reclaim that province for Northumbria, or however you pronounce it. Although I won't reclaim everything because I don't need it. I'm more interested in the money. But I also don't want Burgundy to annex anything from England. Well, maybe except for those provinces. Oh, and it turns out that I have the maximum amount of points. So I activate the Golden Age. This causes, among other things, everything I spend points on to be 10% cheaper. That's why I'm conducting technology at a lower cost now. I'm taking the second idea, which is expansionist, just as I planned. I'm developing it for 362 points. Why do I have such high corruption? What a noob. I forgot to move that slider all the way to the right at the very beginning. With the second colonist, I'm doing exactly the same. I send them first to establish a colony. And having two colonists, I'm doing four colonies at once. Admittedly, it cost me quite a bit. Well, but we built those buildings for a reason. We engaged in trade for a reason. Well, because we're already earning quite well as Spain. And we can afford to create so many colonies at once. And I actually want to go four or five colonies and then focus on the next area. But I have to quickly focus on the Caribbean to make sure the Portuguese don't get there. Well, at least not before us. No, this campaign is pure gold. And you know what's the best part? The Iberian wedding happened even though Aragon became a great republic. Although I see that the government form isn't listed as a requirement for the Iberian wedding, but this section hasn't been updated in a while. And of course, we want Aragon to be in a personal union with us. And another stroke of luck is that Isabella of Castile appeared immediately after this union. It's just strange because instead of the usual 12 years, she has five. That's quite good too. Now it would be great to get Burgundy, which I must admit has grown significantly. The fourth government reform. And for Castile, there are two useful ones here. Land of the church, when you have a lot of cardinals. And Castile usually has that, which is a very good modifier to get even more papal influence. Alternatively, if you need diplomats to maintain the balance of power, and I'll go for land of the church. And now, yes, we need to start sending our troops to the new world, first to the provinces and preferably here, this way, to minimize manpower losses by staying in open seas. Byzantine refugees, I'm taking them in. It's worth having a small army here. 3,000 troops should be enough. Alternatively, have 3,000 troops in every other province. And if you encounter natives, it's worth fighting them and and securing the colony. Well, unfortunately, as you can see, I lost one because I didn't have any troops there. You'll need a much larger army for Africa because as you can see, there's a significantly larger number of natives there. Yes, about eight to 10,000 per province and that army will be regular infantry. We won't need anything more here. Next, I recruit another 3,000 troops. Again, regular infantry and I'll send one group of 3,000 to South America, one to Central America and one to North America. I'll assign them to each conquistador army and send them in search of the Golden Cities. And at the same time, as I mentioned before, Burgundy becomes a personal union under Castile. Wow. What a Burgundy! This Burgundy is a monster! Now I wonder if the Emperor will declare war on me. And look, a rebellion has broken out and is attacking. Thanks to that, the colony is saved. Although I'll try to handle this announcement differently. Namely, I'll carry out the mission for the Aragonese claims, which gives me the opportunity to restore the union over Naples. I call both the Pope and Austria to this war. I guess the Emperor won't declare war on me while he's already in a war on my side, right? Because in this war, I clearly have dominance not only at sea, but also on land. Well, we'll find out soon enough. The whole of Burgundy belongs solely to me. Oops. So, I do have a war with Austria after all. Being at war with them, I can't handle this announcement. The paradox of paradoxes, it foresaw this. Here goes our conquistador in the Mexico region. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I won't take anything from Venice in this war, because Naples gives me a lot of aggressive expansion. And I have to be careful, especially since we'll soon have a war with Portugal. Luckily, the emperor isn't too strong. And even Burgundy is managing fine against them, while I occupy Austria. Ooh! And for having a presence in France, I'll get 10 power projection points. Permanently, very nice. It's a mission for conquest, but I'll wait for my aggressive expansion to increase before moving forward. From Austria, I'll only take their money in this war. I still hope that they'll be somewhat stronger. Although Austria seems weak to me. A quick little war with France for some money and the opportunity to suppress my rebels. But I don't think France stands a chance against us. Meanwhile, I'm sending out a third conquistador. I also grant privileges to the burghers. I 
I just had to wait, unfortunately, until I could revoke one of the previous privileges. Grand New World Charters and another new privilege. Establish New World Mission, which increases our native assimilation bonus by 50%. It's time to colonize the Caribbean. First, two regular colonies, and then I'll revoke them and use the Expel Minority's ability twice. During the search for the Golden Cities, other events can occur, which, by the way, I forgot to mention earlier, and they usually give some points. It's worth taking them, especially if you need a fair amount. You can safely ignore the native's attitude towards you. Ah, and one more thing. Remember, after dealing with Burgundy, you can get an event to obtain all their lands for free without annexing them. But you can't wage any wars for about 20, 25 years. No offensive wars, no defensive wars, none at all. And if you get that event, also remember that you must move your capital around the year 1500. Oh, somewhere around here. Oh, in this region here. Otherwise, you'll face the Dutch Revolt. That moment when my unions crush priceless French armies. This type of event is also a very important thing for me to show you because not everyone knows about it. I found out about it somewhere two, three years ago. Such events occur only and exclusively when you don't exterminate the local population. If I were to exterminate them, meaning, oh, I used this, and here I would have zero population. Such events wouldn't occur to expedite colony development. But look, they're quite cool. And finally, we make Portugal our chosen country. But beware, we need to take those two provinces from it, needed for further missions, and Algarve is given to Aragon. And why is that? You'll see in the end. Oops, I went too far. That's why we grant another privilege from the nobility. All right then, I've already built churches in provinces where it was profitable. Now let's talk about production. Basically, wherever it's profitable. And with specific goods, cattle is profitable, spices definitely, iron too, silk as well. As for the other trade goods you see here, no, sugar is still profitable too. And from what I can see, Portugal has started colonizing Africa for now, let it be. Although now we want to repay its debt so that it doesn't have anything negative here, and so that it can afford to colonize. Remember, we need to have positive relations with them. At least a plus one, otherwise we'll lose them if our ruler dies. And actually, I can finally take care of our gold mine and upgrade it to level 10. All right then and we continued our reconquest. And basically, we have also finished it simultaneously. Oh, I saw bonuses for conversion. How nice. Iberia has also been converted, and honestly speaking. So while waiting for further conversions to have the ability to accept Moroccan culture, because then we have faster conversions when we accept a certain culture. However, I will only have it at Diplomatic Technology 8. But since I already have these conversion bonuses, now I'm taking all these provinces with trade company everywhere, and I didn't want to have it here anyway. Well, at least not in this way. Why am I clicking like this. After all, it's enough if I click it and the trade company disappears. Or not. Well, it used to disappear before, but I won't conquer these provinces for the second time. Here I only take them once to trigger the conversion event and I will convert each province one by one. Now I still have to wait for all my colonies to be established because I want to show you the proper path of sending colonists. The earlier one was just temporary. When we have such a mission to accomplish, we must take it. On the other hand, I want to attract some investors from England again, because between us, soon we will have to move our entire army to Central America and conquer Mexico as quickly as possible. Well, they even have some money for investments. I finally finished setting up our colonization policies as well, and from now on we can calmly activate all our missions, which increase our settler growth. And from what I can see, Spain probably only has this one. Well, okay, there's a second one. Five provinces and Castilian Brazil is being established, and the most important thing here is for it to be a self-sufficient colony in the beginning, because then we receive an additional colonist. Unfortunately, it has increased independence desires, but we can handle that. In our subject management panel, we can modify our relationship with our colony. Here, we can spend money to lower their liberty desire and give them slight bonuses, but only if you have a problem with it, because ultimately we will be changing the type of this colony anyway, which we can also do from time to time. Here, of course, if we want to increase our army size, we go for crown colony. If we want to increase our fleet size, we go for private enterprise. Also, it's worth remembering that colonies give us an additional merchant when they have 10 provinces. All right, I finally have four free colonists, so I can show you the proper path of colonization. With four colonists, if you don't have money, you send a regular colonist three times. Once they arrive, you recall them and use the expel option four times. Since my Spain is really making good money, I'll allow myself to do it at a ratio of four to four. Another issue that many people mention in the comments is about taking territories from certain nations, right? Well, you can't do that anymore. Unfortunately, it has been nerfed. You can only take territories that they currently possess. So, as you can see, even though this tribe has rights to this land, unfortunately, I can't take anything from them, and they still flee, although not really. Maybe eight colonies are too much after all. Yay, the birth of colonialism, luckily for me. You know what? Two things prove that this patch is really, really buggy. First of all, my ruler keeps improving. 566. Six. I have a feeling it's related to the elections in Aragon. Besides, another messed up thing is that when this stupid country has slightly 
slightly less Republican tradition than usual, it stops choosing my ruler as its own leader, as you'll see soon on March 16th. Look, 1516, they chose my ruler again. Six, six, six. What the fuck? Paradox. What is this even supposed to be? And another thing, if Aragon doesn't choose my ruler for the throne in five years, I will lose the personal union. Well, what can I do? I handed over this province to Aragon during the conquest of Central Africa. However, I'll have to integrate it as soon as possible at the 10th level of administrative technology. This may disrupt my colonization plans with Central America. Yes, I'm not rushing with it. I'm also expanding the ports of Seville. I will develop the entire province to fulfill our mission. I'm really curious about what I'll get here. Well, actually, I'm curious about this mission. I'm super curious about what I got in this event. I gave a province in South America to Aragon. Maybe I'll make a colony here after all. So far, in the next elections, my ruler was chosen again, and her stats are 6, 6, 6. It's incredible how buggy it is. Time to expand the port of Seville and something else. It speeds up our colonization. Actually, a nice little bonus. Small, but still something. I'm already going with a colony in La Plata. The Caribbean is practically secured. We don't need more, but I also want to have a Portuguese colony here. And I'll honestly say it's developing quite quickly. And you haven't seen the bonus I have for extra settlers yet. Well, it's average. 63%. Very nice. Aragon is finishing coring those provinces. That's why we can try to establish more for them somewhere here. I'm not worried about Portugal. It definitely has reach. Here in the new colonies where we don't have penalties yet, it even has a 71% chance for additional colonists. Unfortunately, for now, Aragon is still too far away. I wanted to make another province along the way, but I guess it won't be possible for me. So for now, everything goes to Portugal. I'm not particularly concerned about these provinces. I want to have all those with gold in my colony as soon as possible. Another idea. And here, if you want to boost your colonies as much as possible to make them as powerful as they can be, infrastructure ideas are definitely worth it. Look at the policies here. The other advancements are also very strong for an empire that intends to expand everywhere. However, I also plan to play with conquest in this campaign, so it's not just colonies and boredom. That's why I'll start with administrative ideas, as it will also speed up the establishment of new colonies. Influence will be taken as the fourth idea, and when I do that, I'll start annexing my personal union and my vassals. In the meantime, let's found Havana. It's a pity that the Ottoman Empire has decided on a slow conquest of the Mamluk Caliphate. I don't understand it. Do bots always choose stupid responses? We're trading sugar and tea. All right. For now, I'll end the war by taking six provinces for myself and six for Portugal, and I'll wait to acquire something here for Aragon. So I won't conquer that little cape yet. The Reformation has emerged. Well, it happens. I'm slowly starting to build my path to India. It's the perfect moment, especially since there are some very good colonization targets here. A new colony and we have a new Castile. Yes, I know, a normal player would have already conquered all of Mexico by now, but everything has its purpose. Well, now I can move forward with conquests since this colony has been established. Remember to leave five provinces here that go to Aragon. And finally, we have a foothold for Aragon. I have quite a lot of wars going on at the same time. We have Aragon's first Mexican colony. So before eating up Aragon, I want to acquire a colony for them in the USA. Unless this country breaks free again, luckily Alt plus F4 and I have an even better ruler. But to not deal with Aragon anymore, we'll conquer the last colony for them. Well, thanks to that, we have the Aztecs conquered and we can soon continue attacking further. And the first shipment of gold has reached us. Now I want to increase it as much as possible. Well, but overall, the most important thing has been done. And yes, now you see, these are not my colonies. These are the colonies of my personal unions. But at the moment when I eat up these personal unions, these colonies will become mine. And there's no such thing in this game that everything will integrate into one large colony. No, we will have three, and that will result in, once we meet the conditions, having, for example, three merchants instead of one. But most importantly, for Spain, what matters to me is changing the type of our colonies, from self-governing colonies to crown colonies or private enterprises. You can have a very cool decision. It's like modifying that contract into one called treasure fleet income. Then each colony increases your treasure fleet income by 20%. And for example, instead of increasing it by 20%, from this region, you increase it by 60%. Well, because you have colonies from Portugal. You will have colonies from Aragon and Castile. That's why I care so much about having Portugal, Aragon, and that's basically it in each colonial region. Ultimately, we can have as many as we can fit here. I'm just too lazy. I recommend this movie, especially if you want to see how to make Afghanistan into this mighty empire and get a rare achievement in EU4.